Okay, we're a block away from the Goodwill. I thought it might be closed. This area was one of the harder hit areas during the um, like looting and stuff. My name is Quicken and it's been a little while so I am happy to be back in front of a camera so this is super fun. Today I have a super fun, two funs, a fun fun video for you guys today. Today I want to share my experience thrifting during the global pandemic. So I went to a variety of different thrift type stores and I want to share with you the different policies, what has changed, and the cute stuff for my capsule summer wardrobe that I picked out. So to get started, the first place I went to was Buffalo Exchange. So I live in Philadelphia, a major city in Pennsylvania. We are in the green phase of opening everything up. And then Philadelphia is on a like special green phase while the rest of the state is in green, Philly is in like green asterisks. So some stores have literally just opened up and I know my yoga studio is opening in a few weeks. So things in my state closed really drastically and are just now kind of opening up. So Buffalo Exchange, if you are not familiar, is a sort of like consignment-y sort of shop that is pretty popular and trendy. There's only a couple of them in the country, I believe, with only two in my state in major cities. They tend to be in trendy areas. What's different about a thrift thrift store and Buffalo Exchange is they also sell pieces that they themselves make. Someone explained to me once on my previous like Buffalo Exchange haul video that Buffalo doesn't want to be all thrift, so they themselves as a company produce some clothing that they like pepper in to the selection and the clothing that they pepper in is fast fashion so going buffalo exchange i had some high hopes i'm interested in graphic t-shirts and clothing that i could maybe upcycle or modify so that was kind of my vision going into Buffalo. Going in, there are a couple things that have changed with the pandemic. One, at Buffalo Exchange, you can bring in your gently used trendy clothing in, trade it in in exchange for a percentage of cash or a higher percentage of gift card. So right now, if you want to bring in those clothes at Buffalo Exchange, you have to make an appointment and then I believe the clothing, you bring it in, it sits for 24 hours, so you would leave. Um, a person who works there would go through it and give you a price, and I believe send it to your PayPal. I, for one, love to bring in a few pieces that I know are on trend and will sell at Buffalo every time I go there, just to take a percentage off of whatever I'm about to buy. However, making the appointment and stuff like that for me, I just wanted to kind of go on a whim. I was in the mood to shop, so that didn't work out for me. So here are my pieces from Buffalo Exchange. The new policy is that there's no fitting rooms. So I believe you are able to return these clothes. I've never returned anything from Buffalo, so I don't know if that policy is new or if you can only return for store credit. But because you can't try anything on, you can bring the stuff home and then return it. So I'm somebody who needs to try stuff on when I thrift or go to Buffalo Exchange just because something can really wow me, but it may not complement my body type. So I'll go into the Buffalo Exchange fitting room with like 10 pieces and narrow it down to three. I am a little nervous for the things I picked out. It's recommended that when you bring these clothes home, you let them sit for 24 hours just to like chill out, get any germs off of them, and that's what I did. So the first piece I got from Buffalo Exchange is this skirt. I like this skirt. It is that like utility kind of thing that's in trend, and basically I like to dress like John, so I thought that this was a really cool brown khaki color, but this is a long skirt. So one thing I thought about was if this skirt fits me and I like it, I have the choice to cut it wherever I want. 
I find that right now things are either really really short or really long and those are the only things I can find out in the market. And I like something kind of like above my knee, almost like school rules, like to your fingertips uh, dress code. So that in mind, I thought I could buy this and maybe thrift flip it. I'm a bit tempted to keep this because I feel like it has so much potential, but it's not a summer skirt. It's like actual denim. It doesn't have any like give, like a jegging kind of skirt would. I think it could look cute with like a sweater, like a crop sweater in the fall with like other stuff going on, but in the summer, it it's so attention grabbing. I like need other stuff to like make you not look at this huge piece of like carpenter brown skirt fabric. Let me know in the comments. So this is an ASOS. ASOS brand skirt. The thing about Buffalo Exchange is the prices can really add up and you can spend a lot of money there really quickly. So this was $14.50. Next I have this Urban Outfitters skirt and it is this like cool little button right here that like flaps over like so. So it's almost like an oversized skirt that someone has like modified. It came this way, but this was like a trend on Instagram for a little while. This is a flattering length for me, and I love the color. And this was $15.50. I would think at Urban, this would be like probably $30 or $40 retail. I think this is cool and interesting. The only thing is I don't think I could ride my bike, because when you like split this open, <laughs> I think like a piece of elastic like right here. could help. One thing I found pretty difficult to shop at Buffalo Exchange currently is I guess because of the system of making appointments and stuff like that, the flow of cool clothes that I'm interested in I guess was a little lacking. So a lot of the clothing selection at Buffalo Exchange right now is their in-house new fashion and all their new stuff is priced between $20 and $30. Some stuff was really cute, elastic waistband jeans or jean shorts, stuff like that, stuff I'm interested in. But right now I do wanna shop secondhand. So although that stuff is an option, it's also in abundance because I assume clothing coming in is coming in really slow, whereas stuff in-house can be created immediately. So that's generally what there is to choose from at Buffalo right now. That being said, I did find this athletic skirt, new with tags, and it's Alpine design. I've never heard of that, but this was $11, so not the price point of their in-house brand, so this is just something that I guess somebody cleaned out their closet and didn't want. New with tags. I like this because it has little shorts built in. Here is that athletic skirt, and it has shorts underneath for running, and like, pockets and stuff for your keys or whatever, you know, your one hitter. This is nice. It does that. And I'm never gonna wear a belt with this. Although it has belt loops. I like this. I wanted something I could like, you know, do yard work in and jog and I don't love how I look in bike shorts, so this is kind of fun. Definitely a keep. I was looking for something like this and didn't want to spend like a million dollars at Patagonia. This, that's fine. Finally, the last thing I got at Buffalo, and I got this final sale because it has a stain on it, and it is this free people kind of linen-y dress with these corset-y kind of clasps that go to the belly button. I thought this would be really cool, really effortless, like hot days. Philadelphia is in the middle of a crazy heat wave, 34 degrees Celsius today, if that means anything to you. I don't know what it means. However, I thought this was really cool. I like the length, although this is kind of a drapey, potato sacky, like this won't show my figure at all. I just thought that it was pretty cute. It still has like this little 
tag thing on it as if the person had never worn it before but it does have a stain on the bottom here that I think I could really easily get out. I hope this is cute and a moment. If not, I'm stuck with it because it was final sale. <gasps> a second stain! Oh, that is like teal. It's a little short in the back, but well, it's a little short, but then the back gives you like two more inches and that totally saved the dress for me, keeping it. So my Buffalo Exchange haul, um, $15, $16, $11, $26. Secondly, I went to Goodwill. So Goodwill is just your standard thrift store and the community that it's in donates to it. So I would say Goodwills generally reflect the community they stand in. You've probably heard thrifting tips to like go to a rich suburb and go to their Goodwill because it'll have great things. I live in Philadelphia, so my Goodwill tends to have a lot of fast fashion and not a lot of vintage. And I tend to lead towards vintage or vintage inspired or graphic t-shirts. So my Goodwill that I went to right now had no shortage of supply. It's sad, but my Goodwill had a lot of t-shirts that were brand new that must have come from local stores that decided to close shop. But that made my selection a little tougher. The new protocol at the Goodwill that I went to was no changing rooms and social distancing. That was about it. You could still donate and I didn't see any unique donation procedures. While I was also there, there were people putting away things from the same giant bins that you directly donate into and then they were just taking those bins out. So maybe these bins had sat for 24 hours and it was time to put them on the floor. But I did think it was unique that it was going straight from donation bin to floor, but I'd never seen the inner workings of a Goodwill, so me being like, oh, that's how it gets there, was kind of naive, I suppose. I was at my Goodwill for probably like two hours and really didn't find much. The graphic t-shirt selection at the Goodwill that I go to is often really, really good, but like I said, it was mostly clear outs from local businesses. So the two pieces I grabbed and I already washed these. I didn't quarantine these pieces because I figured I'm just keeping them. I got this loose fitting green t-shirt. This is from The Gap. Like I said, my, my Goodwill isn't really thrifty. It's more like current fast fashion pieces like so. So it's really great if you want to get these things in trend just second hand. I had a haul from this Goodwill before where I was able to get like a she and skirt and stuff like that stuff. I'm probably not comfortable buying first hand, but second hand I know like, oh yeah, that skirt is fast fashion, but it'll work, you know? So this is a Gap shirt and I like pieces from the Gap. So if I can go there and see Gap stuff, I can kind of guarantee its quality. I wanted something really loose and airy that wouldn't like stick to my skin and I could go out in the summer heat and it wasn't like tight fitting. And the really cool thing I found at Goodwill this time were these vintage Hanes sweatpants. The tag is so cool. And although they were red, I'd love if they were blue. These are really, really sick. I love the bottom and I've been looking for vintage sweatpants forever. So this is really fun for me. My Goodwill tends to have like those jogger athletic sweatpants because I know those are more likely to be in trend. This is kind of like out of trend, a little like, I don't know, elementary school style, but these are really sick. And I've been looking for something like this forever. Finally, I have these Dickies that are Urban Outfitters Dickies. And they are marked irregular on the tag. So there must be something like wrong with them, but I, haven't figured it out yet. I don't know what it is. They are like a little, they have some like pilling on them. I don't know what the standard at Urban is and how these got marked irregular. They do have like some kind of like dust, not much. They are 
cut at the bottom like that, which I really like. I would have done that myself anyway. These are size 8. I do not fit into Dickies at all. Not with this body. It doesn't look good. I get that like whole like flap of fabric that just comes out and gives me like plumber's crack infinity. So it was nice to have a pair of Dickies that I could get really cheap to just try out and figure out. There is some like blue pen in the pocket. I can't really figure out what's irregular about these, but these are really, really exciting to me. If they weren't at a thrift store, I probably wouldn't have picked them up. I looked it up and these are on Urban's website for like 50 or $60 right now. These are the first pair of Dickies I have ever fit into that fit well. I mean, I used to wear Dickies when I worked at McDonald's, but they were like women's low rise. They were awful. I love these. I don't know what's irregular about them. I don't know if it's the way the pants are cut at the bottom. On Urban's website, they don't seem to be frayed at the bottom. Maybe they made these and it seemed out of trend. I love them. They are a size 8 and they're so good. I was worried about this, but let her swing. Finally, what I am the most excited for and what I found the most, like, awesome things at which is so nice i really had that itch to thrift and right now my favorite style is like vintage inspired and vintage pieces even if the vintage is only a couple years old that's kind of like exactly what i'm into so i went to retrospect which when you go there the receipt says goodwill on it but it is a curated thrifted place where the pieces are either dead stock or from the 80s, things like that. It's a really, really, really cool space. But because it is curated, the prices are a little higher than Goodwill. But I only spent about 45 minutes in Retrospect versus the two hours I spent in Goodwill. And the things I found at Retrospect are awesome. I love them all. And I had to like cut myself off every section. I found something I absolutely loved This retrospect is in Philadelphia on 6th and South. It has been there I don't know forever and it's so awesome. I Love going there. I have a lookbook from a few years ago of just things from retrospect. It is my favorite place to shop I've been waiting for them to open back up and I believe they've been open for about two weeks because I planned on going there much earlier so the procedures there when you walk in you have to wear your mask and they have hand sanitizers when you walk in so you know you go there and your hands are clean when you go in and everyone else's hands are clean as well touching things when i asked what the special instructions were the front desk told me to limit touching things and there's no trying on anything including shoes so no fitting rooms you know, if you are somebody who has to go through every single piece in the store, maybe limit that behavior to, are you here for just shorts? Just look at the shorts. So for me, I knew I was there for summer wardrobe, which is kind of all encompassing, but it meant not looking at the jackets, the sweaters, the vests, I guess, the dresses. That's normally how I would shop anyway, but it was nice to be told that, I guess, and then that would limit maybe other people who might be flipping or, you know, just there to browse. So here's my stuff from Retrospect, and I'm so excited. Again, the policy for this is you can return things, including bathing suits. The first thing I grabbed is so sweet, and it is this little shirt. International Marine Corps team and it has these cute little characters on it I would assume this was passed up because of its like red white and blue vibe But I think I can dress this in a way that looks more Cool and collected this shirt itself is made of like a gauzy material not like a cotton like you can see like it has very little pull and give and This is just a patch. It seems so purposeful on there but it could be a little upcycle. 
And then here are the sleeves just like this. I think that this is going to fit really cropped and baggy, which is me to a T. And the price on this was $18, which is a lot. But you get there and you get into a groove and you keep finding stuff you really like. And I think this is the most unique shirt ever that I will never see anybody else wearing. This looks so cool. I love the crop. Oh, that, that is so cool. I love it. So, here's my receipt. See, it has like a Goodwill on it. So these are vintage denim shorts, which I've never owned a pair of. And I got them, I believe, oversized so I can wear them with a belt and they can last much longer. My weight tends to fluctuate 10 to 15 pounds every year. So I bought these with the intention of having them forever. They're frayed at the bottom and kind of like a little bit of a longer length, but I'm hoping they sit on me high rise. The brand is not inside. Wait, here we go. These are active wear made in USA. You can see that's like a really cool, like vintage tag. So these were $14, which I think is really cool. I, if these fit, I intend to have them forever, but if they don't fit, I can return them. So far, I have not tried them on yet. Okay, these are those shorts I wasn't too sure about. They fit my body like this is all great no like bread legs all that stuff but up here oh that's super nice oh that's so comfy i don't know how good it looks i feel like jeans this cut are cool right now and if they're not it's better than all the jeans i have that have the like whole other part of my butt coming out. The sunset, as I call it. This is just the first belt I grabbed. Normally I'd want like a chunky belt. Oh, that's nice. Kind of does that. Kind of does that a little bit. Oh, these are great. Yeah. So this next shirt it's just pretty cool. It's like an athletic shirt with like buttons. I would think like a baseball shirt. And it just says A1 Terminators Softball Club. That's so cool. I really wanted like a basketball jersey this year. My friend wears one like completely on purpose and it's so cool. But I'm not familiar enough with sports to really go out and buy one. There were some cool like purple and green ones at the store which looks like Eva 1 from Evangelion. I was kind of like, can I just wear this sports shirt and if people on the street berate me about it, I could be like, no, this is an anime reference. Hesitant to do that as well though. I thought this would be a really cool start. It's kind of oversize-y. Retrospect doesn't organize by size, they organize by color, which can be a really fun experience because you can kind of just gauge what fits. And this was $12 and the tag is majestic. I think that's cool. I have literally been like salivating at this bag of clothes ready to make this video because I'm so excited to wear these pieces and I have not been excited about like new clothes for a while. I've really just been wearing like the same five things. So this has been super fun. Next on that same like I want to wear jerseys but I don't know any teams, I got this like I guess it's called like a penny and it just says 83. That's all it says. I think this will be super fun and super breezy with just like a bra underneath and like a gold necklace. I think that'll be super fun. This was $14 and you know, something you could steal from your community center, I guess, but I'm super excited about it. It's kind of cropped. I think with the V-neck, it'll fit kind of like off shoulder and really, really, really cute. It's a sports jersey, all right. Next, I got this skirt and this skirt is like papery material and super super thin and it has a midi length i think a skirt like this will be so easy to upcycle and it is so vintage so i do feel bad about upcycling such a thing chic 
change labels? I don't know. This is another full length skirt that I'm iffy about as well. It's comfortable, it's really breezy fabric for summer. It's a good length. It does look good kind of cropped up as well, but it's nice to be knee length, cover some of the tattoos a little more casual. And the waistband is actually loose against my stomach because it, it's tight here, so that seems to be where all the support is. Although it does really emphasize my pouch. I feel like it's like all eyes on pouch right now. If not that, if I fake it, that looks good. And I'll just walk around like this. Let me know what you think in the comments. I think I have like another week if I want to return this. I do like it, but if it's not perfect, I won't reach for it. That's the thing. Here, okay, this is my final piece from the haul in total, but this piece is amazing. I spent 10 minutes of the 45 minutes just with this piece, and this is a vintage 80s bathing suit. This is a tie. I'm gonna take the tie off just to show you what this looks like. So this is a tube top style, but it came and it still has the straps. Amazing, the brand is E. Stewart. And it still has the tag, which is so wild to me. The tag obviously means no one has ever worn this bathing suit before. So that maybe this was from an estate sale or something like that. It's really hard to imagine where this piece was for the last 30 years, just hiding in perfect condition. But you can see it has a little dressy thing right here, and then you can pull that up, and that's where the bottoms live, and they're actually not attached. And the bottom seems good. High-waisted, the leg holes have like a little elastic, so it's not gonna give you that like bread ass that I so lovingly have at all times of my life. So I think this is really, really, really cute. And then these little holes for the belt. Can you believe this is a belted swimsuit from the 80s? The color, the color alone. I was walking and I saw this color and I was like, can I just actually literally wear this as an outfit? Cause it's so, so, so cool. Retrospect also had a bunch of bodysuits. Think like 90s, 80s gymnastics, just brilliant gymnastics were a huge part of the 80s for some reason, not so much anymore. But this is so, so, so cool. I am worried because this is a size 10, um, but I don't really know necessarily what that means. Were size 10s different in the 80s? I look eyeballing this, it looks like it's gonna fit. That's how big my butt is. So I hope this fits. You'll know, cause I will be trying it on in an instant. Okay guys, are you ready to see the bathing suit? Whee! It fits so good! It fits so good! I love it! It's so cute! Here's the little tie, and I have the straps in. I mean, I would swim in the river, so I prefer straps, and I like how it looks. So cute! I have my underwear on, but even this this is so, this fits so well. It's not super tight in the legs, so there's like room. Oh, all I want are vintage bathing suits. This is so great, it's so cute. I wish this was a, like a top or something. This is my favorite piece out of all of them. This is it pulled all the way down. I realized I had it like all the way up here. This is probably more accurate to the fit. Oh, this is perfect. This is perfect for like swimming with your family. $18, which really affordable for an amazing bathing suit you feel good about. And in total, at retrospect, I spent $90 on these pieces. So thank you guys so, so, so much for joining me and welcoming me into your world. I love it and I'm humbled by your viewership. Thank you so much. Subscribe if you would like to. I have plenty of videos on fashion and while I felt that there was no need for fashion in this current world, 
going out and being able to thrift and get these pieces clearly has made me very happy. And these are all pieces that are according to the current state of what I want to wear, which is breezy, comfortable, statement, and all of that just made me so happy. So it was nice to be human. So if you're like me and feeling pessimistic about the future of fashion, just know that I had a good time and there were things in the way that made this not easy or accessible and then really accessible, really easy, really great. Let me know how thrifting has been in your state or country in particular. And you can always follow me over on Instagram at quietcoolkid where I will no doubt be styling these pieces. I love you guys so, so, so much. And until next time, bye.